If you don't believe in mental illness or you lack the basic empathy for other people's emotions, then this is your cue to click off the video. Hi guys! We're going to be tackling a little bit of a harder topic today, so uh, grab your box of tissues and get strapped in because it's going to be a bumpy ride. I have PTSD. I also suffer from depression and anxiety. Post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, really, for a four-letter acronym, it really says very little about how much it affects a person's life. I believe it's super important to be really outwardly spoken about mental illness and invisible disability because it's something we're not used to hearing. I grew up in a world where mental illness was not spoken of and you'd be shunned for admitting that you needed help. Because of not having access to mental health care, I wasn't able to seek treatment until recently. Now, through a combination of therapy, medication, and an amazing support system, I'm working on getting better and working on my mental health. But I'm 26 years old and I wasn't ever able to address my mental health until recently because I lived in a world where mental illness is something to be ashamed of. And I wanted to share with you guys how these three things are working for me. Let's start with the easiest thing to acquire and the thing that most of us are lucky enough to have, a support system. It's very important to have a support system. It can be just the direct few people that you trust the most that surround you. My therapist calls them couch people, people who you could crash at their couch at any moment. For me, it's the people that you consider family even if they're not. I have a group of about five people that I consider my support system that are there for me at all times. And I'm very lucky to have those people there for me. It's important that these people are people that you are comfortable feeling vulnerable with as they're going to be, they're gonna need to be there for you when you're at your lowest. So people that you trust, people who you can rely on as far as housing, and people that you feel safe with in your vul most vulnerable state. Those are going to be your A-team, the support system that you need to have with you, and the building blocks of the trust, tr trust? the house of trust that you're trying to build for yourself and those people are going to be the foundation of making sure that you get better. Next I want to talk about something that is fairly new to me, which is medication and therapy. I know this isn't a viable option for everyone considering the current state of um, accessibility for healthcare. I currently do not have health insurance so I totally get how hard it is um, to get medical help, but I myself am working through a sliding scale program and I have found an amazing therapist who, um, uh, you know, she understands my situation. So there are options out there for people who don't have the funds to maybe go to the best place, but there are places that will help you and take care of you for whatever you can pay. I'll make a whole video about uh, therapy, sliding scales, and um, how to find the right kind of therapist for you. All that stuff, please give me a like down below and leave a comment letting me know that you want to see that video and I'll start that up for you guys. As far as my routine goes, I have a cognitive behavioral therapy route that I am going to tackle my PTSD. I take an SSRI daily for uh, my anxiety. I use medical marijuana as a PTSD treatment for my trauma and I also use it as a pain aid for my chronic pain illness. Another thing that's helped me a lot is reading a lot of books about mental health, mental illness, books written from the viewpoint of a person with mental illness. I found that I feel a lot of comfort when reading other people's experience with things that I can relate to. The first book I want to talk about that really made an impact with me was Furiously Happy. It is back here. Uh, Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. It is an amazing book 
that makes light of the daily life of a person with mental illness. I kind of take the furiously happy notion from furiously happy and give it a unicorn spin. This book really helped me cement the idea that if I work hard to make my life happy and sparkly and full of light and things that I love, then no matter how bad my health gets, I will always be surrounded by things that make me happy. So I will inherently always be a little bit happy. That being said, I wanted to talk about something that's been helping me a lot lately and I would like to recommend it to you guys and that is Dance Like Nobody's Watching. This has been so therapeutic for me and I didn't even realize how much it was going to help. I literally go to the garage with my laptop and my headphones and I sit in there and I just have solo dance parties with myself. I close my eyes and I play the music as loud as I can and I let go. I dance for hours sometimes just by myself. I sing the words and I feel the songs and I'm so musically driven. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about was community. In 2017, I have discovered a new sense of community. I realized that something that's helping me a lot is talking to other survivors, talking to other people with mental illness, talking to other people who have depression, anxiety, people who have attempted suicide. I want people to know that they're not alone. Though I am sunshiny and sparkly and rainbows and unicorns all the time, that doesn't mean that I'm always the brightest and the happiest. Bad days do happen and there are days where I don't want to get out of bed and there are days where I can't physically make myself move. Long story short, we are all a little bit different, but maybe we can all relate a little bit in the fact that we all have our difficulties and every day we all have our own little journey that we're taking to get better. And I wanted to tell you, you personally, that person right there watching me, you right there, you are loved and beautiful and perfect the way you are, no matter how hard it is to be you right now. And if you ever need something, please do not hesitate to contact me because I never want you to feel alone. That got really awkward. That being said, I will be back with a lighthearted video sooner than later. I am working really hard on upgrading this YouTube channel. I've got a intro video in the works, I've got some music being made, I'm working on some graphics, and I am, as always, working on lots of content for you guys, so please uh, subscribe down below to keep updated on the stuff that I'm going to continue to post, and hit that little bell uh, to get a notification every time I post. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, please leave a comment down below with the word butter biscuit, and that way I will know that you made it to the end. And for those wondering, this is just a little bit temporary. I've got some uh, thoracic outlet syndrome stuff going on. I hope you guys like my little setup here. I still haven't figured out where I'm gonna be filming in this new location. But uh, for now, I guess this is what we have on the inside. Leave me any books that have helped you guys out down below or anthems that you guys dance like nobody's watching to because those are two things that I need more of. And as always, lots of kisses and lots of love to all my sparkly little unicorns. And I'll see you next time, babies. Bye.